So uh, that's the question is moving into week two, you're going to look at the quarterback. Mitch has to now win games. Mike Tomlin's analysis of him after the game was he did not blink. Is, is that enough? Is didn't I mean, Mitch played well when he needed to in overtime in the fourth quarter. Like, he made those plays. But there were a lot of times, I mean, he had Pickens on a deep route that if he, he threw it out of bounds on purpose, and if he didn't throw it out of bounds on purpose, Pickens is gone. That is the easiest deep ball that he probably will have all season. Then the I think it was the, literally the play before Pickens on the out route to the sideline he's got to dive for a catch that's already out of bounds he doesn't make it I mean it can you rely on Mitch or do you just think that you just need time like you said to gel to work to work out the kinks and then you'll see what happens well I don't think you have a much of a choice quite honestly like you have to rely on Mitch like this is your guy you you name him the starter I don't think they'll you know throw Kenny in you know this quickly but yeah, you have to rely on Mitch. Um, whether you can or not, I, I I'm still a little more optimistic on Trubisky. I think than the than the average on Mr. Trubisky than the average person is. Um, yesterday was disappointing, but I think it was the first game. You can you can make the argument that they do need more time to gel and that they are still figuring each other out. Um, they faced a pretty good Bengals defense, um, but yeah, it, yesterday I just did not. You know, it killed my optim. It didn't kill my optimism. It dampened my optimism a little yeah. bit. Um, yeah, but but you also just, you need Mitch needs a little bit more from the playmakers too. I think you know only three targets for Pickens. I feel like they should have looked his way more often. Um, the fact that he didn't have a running game to help him out at all really didn't didn't make things any easier on him. I also was a little surprised that they didn't try to use that Mitch didn't use his legs a little bit more. Um, I thought yes. he could have in certain places. Um, yeah, I. I Again, I'm still optimistic that Mitch can can kind of turn this around and, and give you a productive season. One in which he's not just he kind of takes a step above being just not actively hurting you and can actively like you know make some plays for you. But what well, yeah, you didn't see it yesterday. No, I that was the thing. And there's comments in here about Matt Canada's offense. I think Matt Canada's offense played a role in this. I thought Matt Canada had decent play calls throughout the game. I didn't think I didn't think it was terrible. I thought it was just not the greatest execution all around. And I think the fact that you can't run the football plays a major role in this. If you run the football effectively, you have a better passing game. That's just how it works. If you can't run the football at all, you don't have a passing game. Defenses could adjust to that quite easily. But you got to find ways to run the football. I mean, you used it with Chase Claypool. He ran for 67 yards or something like that. That's what you that's what you were looking for out of Matt Canada's offense. Matt Canada's offense that we keep hearing about, that we watched at training camp with all these jet sweeps and end arounds. I mean, they ran a double reverse flea flicker. Okay? A double reverse flea flicker. But you're not going to use your quarterback in the red zone. The most athletic quarterback you've probably ever had in your coaching career, you're not going to use him in the red zone. I thought that was a big question mark because that was something – I mean, Mitch showed it. Mitch showed, especially in overtime. You saw him break tackles. Right. He, he could do that in the red zone, and you have guys behind him. I, I don't know. Like, why keep Mason Rudolph for a worst case scenario if you're not going to try to push the limits with the guys that you have in there because you kept those backup plans? It just didn't. It didn't add up to me. So I would say, I, I mean, in my opinion, I think that Matt Canada's coaching was, eh, at best, nothing great. Right. Yeah, and I feel like that was the – I feel like the defense really uh, – the defense really kind of made you look away from the fact that – I don't know. I it, Like, it, it's it's sort of the same thing with Mitch, actually. It's – it's it was fine, but it, you didn't really – you didn't actively hurt the team, but you did not really do anything to make – give them a better chance to, to win, I, I felt yes. like. Um, yes, I which is which is not going to be good enough if you don't have TJ. If Najee's hurt and you still can't run the ball, like the it, the margin for error is so slim with this team. If they really want to be competitive, um, so you know you need more from guys like Canada and you know Mitch and and, and the rest of the offense. Agreed. And there's comments in here, like just to because I think it went back to Canada and 
the rest of the offense, the execution. I thought the offensive line, outside of not being able to run block whatsoever, I thought they played much better than I expected them to and gave me a little bit of confidence. I looked at this offensive line like, oh, look at that. You know, they didn't suck. They, well, they weren't good, but they definitely didn't suck. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I feel like the, the biggest compliment I can give them was that I wasn't actively – saying to myself while I was watching the game, like, wow, the offensive line is terrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. Which which I had been doing, um, you know, during all of their, their preseason games and during practices that I'd watched. Um, yeah, the, uh, you know, it's a kind of a cliche, but if you're not talking about the offensive line, they're doing a good job. Yeah, I think that's exactly it. If you're not talking about the offensive line, they need to do – or they're doing a better job. I just think that right now you walk into week two if you don't have Najee Harris – you're looking at this going, this is this is going to be the judgment week. This is where you're paying Mitch Trubisky starting money. You're putting all your faith in him. You, you've you said this is our offensive line. You've made that a point. Like nothing's going to change with this offensive line. If you don't have your star offensive player, you just paid Deontay Johnson. You used a second round pick on a wide receiver. You're giving Chase Claypool all this opportunity to make things happen. I mean, you, you cut you cut a former fourth round running back to keep an undrafted rookie. I mean, this is this is it. You know, balls in your court. The are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna man up or are you are you gonna mess up? You know, and I think that's how they're gonna look at it this week. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if I have great expectations. At the same time, though, and, and I know it's super early in the week, but New England looked terrible. So mm-hmm. that might be that might be good news for the Pittsburgh Steelers.